Good morning, St. Stephen. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us during our worship time on this morning. We have reached the second Sunday in November, and we are excited about it. We are praising the Lord for all of the things that he has done in our lives. If you just want to just pause for a moment just to give the Lord some thanks, you can do just that as we get ready to do a little bit of praise and worship on this morning. How about that? Amen. Y'all know this, sing it with me. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. You brought me, yes, you brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way, a mighty long way. Hey. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. You brought me, yes, you brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way. Hey. You've been my mother. You've been my father, you've been my sister, my brother too. You brought me, yes, you brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way, a mighty long way. You've been my mother, you've been my father, you've been my sister, my brother too. You brought me, yes, you brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way. You've been my bread, you've been my water, you've been my life, my everything. You brought me, yes, you brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way, a mighty long way. You've been my bread, you've been my water, you've been my life, my everything. You brought me, yes, you brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way. One time, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. You brought me, yes, you brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way, a mighty long way. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. You brought me, yes, you brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way. Amen. Amen. Good morning, St. Stephen. It's so good to be with you this morning as we gather together on this second Sunday in November. God has blessed us and brought us to the beginning of a brand new week. And what better way to start this week out than to join with family and friends, lifting up our hearts, our minds, and our spirits as we sing praises unto our great God. I want to thank each of you for joining us on this morning, whether you're with us on Facebook Live or on YouTube, or if you're on the conference call line, we're glad to have you with us on this day. Now, again, push aside anything that may try to distract you because we believe that God has a blessing in store for us on this morning. So let us prepare ourselves now to have a tr tremendous time in the name of the Lord. Let the church say amen. amen. Join me, if you will, for our call to worship. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Together, O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, 
All the earth sing praises. And we shall sing the Lord's praises on this day as we lift up hymn number 379, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Much we need thy tender care. In thy pleasant pastures feed us for our use thy foes prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast bought us, thine we are. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast bought us, thine we are. Without any further lining, let us sing this great hymn of the church with uplifted voices. Let the church say amen. Amen. Would you join me now in the word of prayer? Eternal God, we are grateful again for this day and for our presence one with another and to know that as we gather on this second Sunday, that your word gives us the assurance that you are in our midst. We're grateful, Heavenly Father, that you have just been so good to us in the many different ways that you have blessed us. We thank you on this day for your power and your peace. We thank you for your presence and your love. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the assurance of knowing that as we lift up our voices on this day, you are the God that hears and answers all of our prayers. God, we want to welcome you in this morning uh, in our worship experience. So we pray, oh God, that you would be in the midst of our singing, be in the midst of our prayers, be in the midst of our scripture reading, be in the midst of our word that goes forth. God, we say to you on this day, just simply have your way and we know that we shall be satisfied. God, we are a people of faith. So we also want to say thank you for all that you have done, but we also say thank you for the things that you are about to do. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray that the people of God say, Amen. Our scriptures today come from the book of Psalms, number 24, verses 1 and 2, and from 1 Peter, chapter 4, verse 10. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it, for he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in various forms. May the Lord add a blessing to those who read, hear, and obey his word. After the rain 
Jesus, let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms shall all Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our worship service. We are thankful for your presence, whether by Facebook or by conference call. What a wonderful time we had at our second in-person service last Sunday. Our next in-person service will be the first Sunday in December. The procedure will be the same with everybody registering and full vaccination is required. Information will come out closer to the date. Sister Jackie Armstrong, who is heading up the Angel Tree Ministry, is in need of $25 gift cards for the Angel Tree children. The gift cards may be from a store of your choosing, as Walmart, Target, Kohl's, Pennies. Sister Armstrong asks that all gift cards be mailed to the church by Saturday, November the 27th, which will help us have time to get the cards out to the children. Thank you for helping to make a child's Christmas a little bit brighter. If you do not have the Zoom app on your phone, tablet, or computer, or know someone who does not, please send an email to RevJBailey at ststephenchicago.org with your name and phone number or their name and phone number. Thank you so much for your help. There will be a church information conference on Saturday, December the 4th via Zoom and conference call. Please put this date on your calendar. The time is still be. to be determined. Daily Bread devotionals are available at the church. You can pick them up on Wednesdays and Thursdays between 12 and 5. There is a 1,000 turkey and food giveaway on Tuesday, November 16th, starting at 1 o'clock at Dearborn Wholesale Grocers on 4525 West Madison. Again, Tuesday, November 16th at 1 o'clock at Dearborn Wholesale Grocers on 4525 West Madison. There will be a joint in-person Thanksgiving service on Thanksgiving Day 
at Original Providence starting at 10 o'clock a.m. The address is 515 North Pine Avenue. Reverend Bailey will be preaching and there will be a combined choir with St. Stephen and Original Providence. Our weekly activities. Join us for Bible study on Tuesday and Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. via Facebook and conference call where Reverend Bailey breaks down the Word of God and gives us application for our lives. Start every Wednesday morning with prayer at 5 a.m. via our conference call number. Reverend Bailey gives a short devotion and then goes into prayer. We have kept our soup kitchen open during this pandemic. Hot meals are being still being served to those who show up on Wednesday and Thursday between 3 p.m. and 5 p.m., but it is takeout only. On Sunday, Reverend Erica teaches on the Sunday school lesson at 8 o'clock a.m. via conference call, and then our worship service begins at 10. November birthdays and anniversaries are on the screen. Happy birthday or happy anniversary to everyone who celebrated this past week. May God continue to bless you with many more. Again, thank you for joining us and have a very blessed week. Thank you for giving generously to what God is doing through the church family at St. Stephen. There are several ways to give. You can give in person. Just drop your contribution in the mail slot of the church. You can also participate in online giving. Online giving through PayPal is fast, convenient, and secure. You can set this up as a one-time donation or reoccurring gift. Visit the church website at www.ststephenchicago.org. Please designate in the memo section if your gift is a tithe, offering, general contribution, or targeted to a special ministry. You can also give through Cash App at dollar sign S-S-A-M-E-C-H-G-O. And lastly, you can give by mail. Send your contribution to the St. Stephen AME Church. The church's address is 3042 West Washington Boulevard, Chicago, Illinois, 60612, Attention Finance Department. Be sure to include your name and address on the check so that a record of your contribution can be provided for tax purposes.
Praise the Lord, saints. Well, I have been blessed by our worship service on today. I want to take this moment to say thank you to all of our worship participants. I thank God for you using your gifts to glorify God and also to be a blessing unto the people. As we prepare our hearts and minds to center ourselves to hear God's word, I'm going to ask if Sister Mary Boone would play for us, I Need Thee Every Hour. Thank you, Sister Mary. Bow your heads with me now in a word of prayer. Let us pray. God, our Father, Savior, and friend, in whom our lives and hope depends. Father, again, we do say thank you for this day and this time that we have been able to share one with another. We thank you, Lord, for your word going forth thus far in song. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the scriptures that have been read. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the prayers that have been lifted up. Now, God, as it is time for your preach word to be shared with us on this day. I ask, Lord, that you would speak to me and through me a word that might encourage, that might inspire, that might lift your people, that might increase our faith. This is my prayer. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Let the people of God say, amen. Hear God's word. I want to read to you two passages of scripture, two verses of scripture, one coming from Psalm 24, verse, verses 1 and 2. And then I would like to lift up 1 Peter, the fourth chapter, verse 10. Psalm 24, verses 1 and 2. It says, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For God founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Then our second passage. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Thus ends the reading. May God add a blessing to the reader, hearer, and doers of God's holy word. I would like to continue on today in our series and lift up in our hearing this subject, the stewardship of our family, the stewardship of our family. Last week, we began a new series for this month under the banner of governing God's gifts of grace with the intent of informing us and equipping us on how to be faithful stewards of God's blessings. It was determined that four gifts of grace would be our focus. The gift of faith, the gift of family, the gift of finance, and the gift of fitness. In our first sermon, the stewardship of our faith, a couple of thoughts were shared that would hold as an anchor for all four subjects to be addressed. Those thoughts were, everything belongs to God, and we must accept that our things, again, are God's things, and our stuff is God's stuff. Secondly, as it relates to our responsibility with God's blessings, we have managerial oversight concerning that which has been placed into our hands and not ownership authorization, authorization meaning God's desire dictates our spiritual supervision and not our personal preferences. Then what we did is we shared what stewardship demands of us. And the stewardship demands were dedication. We said that we must designate this gift that God has given us for God's glory. Secondly, we said we must have discipline. 
meaning that we must remain consistent in our stewardship. Thirdly, we said we must have donation, meaning that we ought to offer our stewardship for the benefit of others. Then fourth, we said discernment, meaning that we need to have wise judgments or that wise judgments are essential in our stewardship. And then the last piece that we shared on last week was this, that works again for all four of the topics that we will discuss is devotion, meaning our stewardship stems from our loyalty to God. So they were dedication, discipline, donation, discernment, and devotion. Today, as we look at the stewardship of our family, let me first share how family came into being. Those of you who are with me today, many of you are familiar with Genesis 1, verse 26, where it says, God told those who were with him or shared with those who were with him, let us make humankind in our image and likeness, and let us grant them governance over the fish in the sea, over the birds in the air, over the livestock and wild animals, and over all the creatures that move on the earth. And God spoken and it was done. The dust of the ground was shaped and fashioned into a body. God blew into the nostrils of Trinity's holy handiwork. And as a result, this constructed cadaver became a living soul. This living soul was named Adam and it possessed or he possessed dominion, authority and influence. And as we continued on in our reading, we also learned that he was endowed with intellect. For the word of God tells us that all the animals were brought before him and he gave them name. But with all that was granted unto this particle of animated clay, what he did not have was a suitable mate. The resolve was God put this newly formed being into a deep sleep and from his side made a suitable companion, a partner in life and ministry, if you will. And these two became one flesh, and thus the family began. Very early on, God saw that it, it was good, it was not good, rather, for man to be alone, for we were meant to love and to be loved. And whether good, bad, or indifferent, family is a gift of grace granted by God, and we must govern this gift of grace faithfully. So let me share with you now five components that are essential if we are going to be good stewards of our family. And I believe that if we can posit the points that will be presented and live out the lesson that is lifted, families will be strengthened and love will abide. Somebody ought to say amen. So the five pieces that I want to share with you today are vision, voice, versatility, validation, and value. Again, if we will adhere to these points that I shall make today, I believe it will be an added blessing to our family life. First off, when it comes to being a good steward, we have to have vision, a good steward for our family. We have to have vision. The Bible tells us without a vision that the people perish, and the same is true as it relates to our families. When it comes to vision, we have to be able to look beyond uh, our isness and we have to see our shelledness. We have to do this, be it uh, about the individual or ourselves as a, or our family as a corporate body. We have to look beyond what we are today and see everything that God desires for us to be. The vision should be hopeful and not one of despair. I heard one time, and I'll share it with you this morning, that a man bargained with the world for a penny and it yielded not a penny more, meaning that we generally get what it is that we bargained for. And if we can't see ourselves as a family in a hopeful way, that's probably and highly likely what is going to become of our families. So we want to make sure that we have a vision that is encouraging, a vision that is uplifting, a vision of blessing, a vision of hope, a vision of love. We need to have a vision as it relates to our family that allows us to be good stewards of our family. 
Not only must we have a vision, but we also must have a voice. The word tells us that the power of life and death are in the tongue. That means we must speak life into one another. Even when we may not agree, our words cannot be venomous. We must say those things that are encouraging. We must say those things that build and not destroy. It matters how we talk and how we share one with another. Our voices matter. And here's what I've discovered. I've, I've made the mistake along the way at times saying things to perhaps that I should not have said. Here's what, I've, here's what I've learned that I want to share with us on today. Once the genie is out of the bottle, you can't put it back into the bottle. So we need to make sure that we're saying the things that are going to be helpful and not a hindrance to our families. So it matters what we see. It matters what we say. It takes vision and it takes voice. Then it takes uh, this thought that we have to have versatility. Life brings about a series of changes. And when we are unable to adapt to the changes that come, relationships will start to creep towards death's door. Everybody changes. Everyone changes. No one is the same. Couples grow, children's, children grow, and plans change. I venture to say this morning that none of us are who we were 10 years ago, and none of us are who we're going to be 10 years from now, because change is a constant in our life. And with that being the case, we have to be versatile. We have to be able to adapt to the changes that are around us. Things that you used to want, you may not want those things any, anymore. Things that you used to be able to do, you may not be able to do those things anymore. And when it comes to our family, we have to be able to adapt. We have to be able to make a change. We have to be able to meet people and accept people where they are. Yes, we may have this vision and thought that they need to be at this place, but some things don't always turn out the way that we want them to turn out. So we have to be versatile. The one that you love or the object of your love may not be able to change, but you have to be able to change, meaning that we have to be versatile. We have to have versatility. So we need vision. We need voice. We need versatility in order for us to be good stewards of our family. But we also need to make sure that we have validation. Come on, somebody say it with me this morning. Validation. We must affirm a person's thoughts, feelings, and opinions. Hear me again. With validations, we must affirm a person's thoughts, their feelings, and their opinions. Validation is not necessarily agreement, but it is a recognition that one's understanding is one's understanding. When I was younger, my parents sowed seeds of understanding in me. However, not everything sown ripened immediately. Some things took time. Some things took experience. What I say to my children, what I've said to them often is uh, 52 knows 28, 52 knows 26, 52 knows 36. But even with that being the case, I have to meet them where they are. And when they express ideas and thoughts, I have to validate them. Perhaps they haven't matured to that place or perhaps that's just where they are. And I have to realize that's that's how it is and accept them and, and validate their thoughts, their feelings and their opinions. I've witnessed it not only in the life of with my children, but also as it relates to my marriage. There are things that we've had to validate one for another. It's just the way that life is. I may not agree or Reverend Erica may not agree with me all the time, but we validate the thoughts that have been expressed. And if you're going to, again, be good stewards of your family, and that's what we're talking about today, being good stewards of our family, you have to have validation because what validation actually does is this. Validation says, I see you. It says, I hear you. And it says, I respect you. Hear me again. I see you. I hear you. And I respect you. 
So we have to have validation. Then lastly, the last point that we want to make is, is that if we're going to be good stewards of our family, we have to value one another. I have learned over the years uh, that different does not necessarily mean deficient. Let me say it one more time. Different does not necessarily mean deficient. We all are different, yet and still we all have worth. To value each other in essence is to say, I love you today and I will love you tomorrow. To value someone is to say, I love you with your virtue and I love you with your vices. To value someone says, I love you and there's nothing that you can do about it. We have to value one another if we're going to be good stewards of our family. And cannot all of this be heard, all of these points, vision, voice, versatility, validation, value, can not all of these points be heard in God's word when God says to us, or when the word of God says to us in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Did you hear that? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The world, different and diverse. The world, ever-changing. The world, good and bad. The world, strong and weak. The world, right and wrong. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Even though this might be the circumstance and situation that the world is in, God loved us, God loves us, and God will always love us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is found in Christ Jesus our Lord. So if we're going to be good stewards of this tremendous gift, this glorious gift, this wonderful gift that God has given us called family, we have to have vision, we have to have voice, versatility, validation, and we have to have value. We have to value and love one another. And so doing, our families will be better and our families will be stronger. Let the church say amen. Well, I pray that you've been blessed this morning by this word that has gone forth as we again have tried to um, lay out uh, the way for us to be a good steward, to be faithful to this tremendous gift called family. If you're with us on this day and as we have shared with you, your heart has been touched, your heart has been pressed and you say, listen, I want to be uh, in relationship with this God that you just mentioned that values us. Maybe you haven't uh, ever heard anyone talk about God before. Maybe you haven't been in a relationship with God before. Well, today you can be in that relationship with God. And all you have to do is just simply ask the Lord to come into your life and to save you. I said in our sermon today that God gave his only son and God gave his son that, so that we could have life and that life more abundantly. So if you're not in a relationship with God today, Today's a day when you can be in a relationship and it's saying, God, come into my life. I accept your son as my savior. Forgive me of all of my sins. I want to turn away from the world and I want to turn toward you. And if that's your thought, if that's the thought in your heart, if that's the decision that you are making today, you can consider yourself saved. Maybe you're with us on this morning and you don't have a church home where I believe everyone needs a covering. And there's no better place, in my opinion, uh, than St. Stephen African Methodist Episcopal Church here on the west side of Chicago. If you are with us today and you would like to be a part of our family, we welcome you the same way that God welcomed us. There is an email address that is on the screen. If you would just reach out to us 
Here's what will take place. Someone will get in contact with you. They will pray with you. They will praise God for you. And they will welcome you into the family of faith. And so please reach out to us on this day. Maybe you're here with us this morning and you're going through various struggles or hardships. You have some difficulties that you are facing. Or perhaps it's not you. Things are going well, but someone you love, someone you care about, you know about a situation where God needs to intervene to bring about a change. Well, whatever that matter may be, we can go to the Lord in prayer. And when we go to the Lord in prayer, we can have the assurance that God will hear and God will answer. Matthew 18, 19 tells us that if we would just simply come together, touch and agree that we can ask of our father anything and it will be done for us. Well, we're touching and agreeing in head and heart today, and we're believing and trusting that God will move on our behalf. Amen. Bow your heads with me now in a word of prayer. God, I want to say thank you again for this moment that we have been able to share. I thank you, God, for your word that has gone forth. I pray, Heavenly Father, that those who have been with us, whether it be on Facebook Live or whether it's on YouTube or whether it's on the conference call line, I pray, Heavenly Father, that a seed of encouragement, a seed of faith has been sown into their hearts on this day that will take root, grow, and produce a fruit that they might be blessed, but even more than that, that they might be a blessing unto others. God, maybe someone has made a decision to have you come into their life and become their savior. Lord, if that's the case, we rejoice on this morning for another one that has entered into the fold. Maybe someone has decided that they wanted to unite with us here at St. Stephen. God, your word lets us know that one can slay a thousand, but two can put 10,000 to flight. And so we welcome them, Heavenly Father, again, the same way that you have welcomed us. And then, Lord, to know that There's a path that has been paved by the blood of Jesus that we can follow that brings us before your presence. And we can share with you every care and concern that weighs heavy upon head and heart. And as we share that care, as we share that thought, Lord, we can know that you are the God that is attentive, the God that cares and the God that moves on our behalf. And God, right now, I just believe for that brother or sister who's crying out to you right now, who's calling out to you right now, that you're bringing about a change in their life. And we say thank you. God, I don't want to forget about our thought on this morning as we talked about being good stewards of our family. I believe and trust, Heavenly Father, that you are blessing the family and we are grateful. Grateful for this time that we have been able to share in word. Grateful for this time that we have been able to share in fellowship. Now, as we prepare to bring this service to a conclusion, we want to say thank you. Thank you for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, and what has entered into the heart of men and women. Now, not unto us, but unto him who is able to keep us safe from falling and present us faultless before the king. May the grace of God, the love of Jesus, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Let every heart say amen. Well, again, I want to say thank you to all of you for being with us in our worship experience on this day. We're so grateful to have each of you join us uh, each and every week. Please know that you are always welcome. And as we gather together, be it for uh, Sunday school, whether it's with our Bible study or our worship service, you're always invited to be a part of what we're doing. As we prepare to leave now, I just want to say to each of you, God bless you and God keep you. And we look forward to sharing with you real soon. Have a great day, everyone.